before we get into the recipes this week, I need to break out and talk about salt a little bit because salt is pervasively dangerous. It's probably one of the leading cause of heart attacks and strokes worldwide. And here's the thing, is that when you're a regular consumer of salt, it deadens your taste buds for salt and for other flavors as well. So you can't enjoy the flavors of natural foods. You've wrecked your taste buds with a chronic consumption of salt. The point is, is once the salt is out of your diet for three to six months, then foods light up with flavor. And then you can taste the sodium in natural vegetables now. And vegetables have more flavor. Salt is upsetting your ability to enjoy food. It's not giving you more enjoyment. It's making you unable to eat natural foods and enjoy them. But salt doesn't just raise blood pressure. It doesn't just cause autoimmune disease, inflammation. It doesn't just increase risk of allergies. It drives the consumption of excess calories. It discombobulates, discombobulates your ability to sense how much calories you should eat, just like oil does. Salt and oil and sugar gives you an inability to regulate your calories. And one last thing, it causes microscopic hemorrhages or microscopic vascular hemorrhaging. And that means it causes small pinpoint damage to the interior wall, the endothelia of your blood vessels, weakening the wall of the blood vessels over the years that you consume salt, even small amounts. And there are two types of strokes. There's ischemic strokes and there's hemorrhagic strokes. Do you guys know the difference? Yes. Does everybody know the difference between an ischemic stroke and a hemorrhagic stroke? No. no. An ischemic stroke is like a heart attack. It's caused by a clot that can go in your heart, travel to the brain, Maybe you could have a small stroke that can just make you not able to talk, or not able to move your left hand for a while. It could go away even, you can improve from that. Usually not, not gonna kill you. A hemorrhagic stroke is not from a clot. It's when a fragile blood vessel in the brain bursts open and you bleed into a segment of the brain. That's a more devastating type of stroke. It can be life-threatening, it can kill you, leading cause of death. It also can keep you paralyzed in your whole body and put you in a nursing home for the rest of your life. Devastating type of stroke. Worldwide, in America, we have the highest rates of ischemic or embolic stroke in, in almost any country around the world. However, in Asian countries where they have more salt, they have 10 times the risk of hemorrhagic stroke, but they have lower rates of heart attack than we do here. Let me clear this up for you a minute. As you eat more burgers and bacon and cheese, and you have more atherosclerosis, the, pla the wall of plaque thickens, the end of the the blood vessels thicken and you get fat built up on the inside of the blood vessel and the outside of the blood vessel, preventing it from becoming elastic, increasing the risk of brain damage, dementia, shrinkage of the brain, and ischemic embolic stroke. When you eat more healthfully, more vegetables, and in some of these Asian countries, they're not eating as much animal fats and animal products, and they have lower rates of atherosclerotic death. They have lower rates of heart attack, but they have higher rates of hemorrhagic stroke because the atherosclerosis that thickens the blood vessels protects the thinner, fragile blood vessels in the brain as they age from bursting and breaking from the excess use of salt. So in populations that are eating a more plant-rich diet, eating a more favorable diet that's gonna lower the risk of heart attack, if those people still salt their foods accordingly, they will have a higher risk of hemorrhagic stroke than the general population eating the standard diet. And, their, and hemorrhagic stroke will now become a leading cause of death in vegans and people who are flexitarians. Did you follow that? Yes. Salt eating is more dangerous. It's dangerous for all. It's a leading cause of heart attacks. It causes increased risk of certain cancers, an increased risk of autoimmune conditions. But heart attack death is so easy to prevent. And if you're gonna live a long time, you certainly don't want to have a hemorrhagic stroke, which is caused by the regular and continual consumption of salt. So now the question is, how much salt is acceptable? Because the body needs sodium, right? What? Yeah, well, how much do you get in natural foods? How much sodium does natural food, what if you're eating a, a very healthy diet? How much sodium do you get in your food? We get about, 500 to 700 milligrams of sodium just from the food we eat, just from the healthy food. It's the, it's the thousands people are adding on to that five to 700 you're getting from food. 
So as long as you're generally under 1,000, it's pretty safe. If you're adding, let's say, an extra two or 300 or a male who's bigger, he makes even 400, you're still gonna be under 1,000, at least under, for a male under 1,100, somewhere in that range. So if you had one thing a day with a little bit of sodium in it, like an Ezekiel bread with 90 milligrams of sodium, a little tomato sauce with 120 milligrams of sodium per serving, or a little bit of, you know, you know, a little bit of spray of mustard which had some sodium in it or something. In other words, within limited amounts, you're still keeping your sodium under 1,000. It's not gonna be much of an issue. But most Americans are putting salt in their food and a teaspoon of salt has 2,000 milligrams of sodium in it, just one teaspoon. I watched a person last night pour about 1,000 milligrams of sodium right on their dinner meal. I was freaking out. <laughs> I was thinking like, what is this? How'd they get sodium here? Is there sodium on the tables? We're looking around tables. Where are they getting the sodium from? Somebody like pocketed it, like put it in them, taking it with them or something. You know? But the point is here, is that I don't care if it's blue salt, black salt, pink salt, Himalayan salt, salt from the rock of Gibraltar, or salt from the backside of the moon. It doesn't matter. It's all 2,000 milligrams of sodium. The mineral content is irrelevant get more minerals in a tablespoon of vegetables that they get 100 times more minerals. So the mineral content is irrelevant. It's the high amount of sodium that you're getting into your bloodstream.